Kia ora and good evening everybody and welcome to tonight's webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. It's um, my absolute pleasure to welcome you uh, here tonight to, uh, to this multi-clinic uh, session about COVID-19. So Fertility New Zealand uh, is a registered charity. We exist to provide information, support and advocacy to all New Zealanders um, undergoing fertility challenges. My name's Nicola Batossi and I'm CEO of Fertility New Zealand. We provide a range of information through our website. Uh, you can see examples of the information leaflets that we provide. You may have seen them at clinics. Uh, we have a helpline which is open and especially so at the moment for any queries or support uh, that you may, may need. We also have a range of uh, support groups that run throughout the country in 12 different centres. Uh, at the moment, most of these are meeting virtually. So without further ado, um, we'll start the session off. Um, each of our speakers will give an update on um, what's currently happening within their clinic. Um, that will be followed by a Q&A session where you can type uh, questions into the chat box that you may have uh, for one or all of our speakers. So tonight we have uh, Fiona McDonald, who is a counsellor with Fertility Plus and a board advisor to Fertility New Zealand. We have Dr Mary Birdsell, who is medical director of Fertility Associates. And we have Lana Hawkey, who is laboratory manager, manager at Reprimed Clinic in Auckland. And I shall hand over to, uh, to Fiona. Thank you. Terrific. Thanks very much, Nicola. Welcome, everybody. Um, so as Nicola mentioned, we're just going to each give a little bit of a um, rundown on where we're at in each of the clinics and what we're currently doing at the moment to support you. And I guess, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge um, first up that um, most certainly we're very mindful of the fact that this um, COVID-19 crisis has um, certainly dealt you, um, I'm sure all of you who are tuned in tonight, a, a, a further whammy of, of uncertainty. Um, and we hope that, um, you know, by reaching out to you collectively tonight, we'll be able to give you some, some reassurance about what we're doing. Um, we'll be able to perhaps answer some of your questions, but we won't be able to answer all of them, I think, at this stage. Um, but we're certainly hoping that perhaps by around this time next week, actually, um, we'll have a little bit of clarity, be it clarity around what we're going to be able to do and when. But we didn't want to leave it any longer to, um, to reach out in this forum uh, through Fertility New Zealand. Um, in the meantime, um, while we are waiting to get that clarity, I, um, as I say, we just wanted you to know that all the clinic teams are working uh, really hard behind the scenes um, to get ready for a busy time when we are able to um, resume treatments. Um, and there's a lot of lot of planning um, going on. Um, and all of the clinics have, and I guess I'll speak specifically for Fertility Plus at this moment, but um, on the website we have updated information and resources and contact details um, for how you can get in touch with us during this period. So there are cell phone numbers, for example, for our nurses, um, for our administrative team, for our counsellors, um, and also um, for any uh, you know clinical inquiries that you have. And we're also offering um, phone and virtual uh, medical and counselling support and appointments during this time. So please do uh, look on the website or um, contact us. Uh, Fertility New Zealand have all of those cell phone numbers as well. So you should be able to quickly and easily get through to us um, with any queries or worries that you have at the moment. Um, as I mentioned too, there are lots of support resources on our website as well. 
um, and as counsellors um, in the clinics, we're, we're available uh, to support you through this really challenging time. So please, please do reach out to us. Um, I think um, probably at this stage, I'm going to just maybe talk a little bit at the end of the webinar about some um, coping strategies, but I might hand over to uh, Lana and Mary now just to talk a little bit about what's happening um, in the clinics with their teams at the moment. Okay. Oh, well, shall I? Oh, well, um, okay, well, shall I go next? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, hi there, my name's Mary Birtzel and I'm the Chief Medical Director of the Fertility Associates Group. Um, welcome and I hope you're all staying safe during the lockdown. I wanted to update you with what Fertility Associates is currently doing and what our plans are for when the government gives us the go ahead to go to level three and then to level two. Um, firstly, when the government announced the level four lockdown, we consulted with MB, who are the Ministry of Business um, Innovation and Enterprise to determine whether or not IVF services were essential services. And we were told we were an essential service. Um, so the advice that we had was that we should complete our cycles um, for women who'd already started their IVF drugs at the time of lockdown, which we did. And then um, during the lockdown, we have completed those cycles and we've only started new IVF cycles whilst we're at level four for women who were just about to start chemotherapy. And so therefore there, were no, there was no other opportunity for them. Um, we continue to look after all of your frozen embryos, your sperm, your eggs and your ovarian tissue and everything that's in our freezers. We're offering telehealth consults with our doctors, both public and private consultations. Our free nurse consults are still running. Our chat box is still running. Our psychologists are still offering their very useful and supportive services. And everything remains in functioning. We just can't take day ones at the moment. When the government announces that we move to level three, we've carefully planned what services we can offer safely um, while making sure that our staff and patients um, are not at risk from COVID-19 transmission. We plan to offer IVF and frozen embryo transfers and donor insemination at level three, um, both public and private treatments. Um, at the moment, we have protocols in place to minimise the risks at that time. We don't plan at level three to offer our full range of services, as I just don't think it's going to be possible to manage the normal numbers of people that come through the clinic. And we don't want lots of people out there doing bloods in all the community labs and driving around town. So it's going to be IVF, but IVF in a slightly different way to how we usually practice. Just as it's different to go to the supermarket these days, it's I think when IVF restarts at level three, it's going to look different. And it's gonna look different because of the importance of physical distancing, um, the importance of minimizing your interactions with people, the use of PPE. And so just for instance, it's going to look like you probably won't be able to bring a support person with you into the clinic um, that, um, but all these details will be up and running on our website, Facebook and Instagram, really probably in the next day or two while we just finalise all the details around this. But rest assured, we are as keen to get back to making babies as you are to have babies. We also have the capacity to cope with the uplift in demand, as not all women are gonna have their period on the same day, fortunately. So that means that that treatment will be able to be, um, to be staggered across the month. Um, and we are absolutely planning how we can safely deliver care, but things are just gonna look a little different. Um, uh, so, um, so we look, as I said, that's really where we're at. We look forward to level three. We anticipate that level two is going to be pretty much business as usual in terms of treatments. So um, yeah, so that's, so that's where we're at. Thanks, Mary. Anna. Okay, thanks. Hi, everybody. My name's Lana. Um, I'm the lab manager at, um, at Rip. Um, 
again, like Fiona and Mary have said, we, we just want to let you know that um, we're thinking of everybody at the moment and we um, we really feel the, the pinch of these difficult times as well and we're, we're super keen to, to get back up and running and get um, get get treatments up and running as soon as we can. So um, the, the plan for Reprimed is... Um, uh, going from level four to level three, uh, we will we will be resuming treatment again. So we have um, we have stopped treatment uh, under level four, and we um, we had our last our last cycle finish up at, um, last week. And um, the plan for I guess everybody's working really hard behind the scenes um, under these level four restrictions. We've all got very interesting home offices now, and um, we are really working. You know, it's it's all about the planning at the moment, so that we can make the return to to um, you know getting the clinics up and running again as smooth as possible. So um, we are also planning on, on resuming IVF and, um, and the frozen embryo cycles and um, IUIs as well. Uh, obviously, there, there will be restrictions on these just based around, um, again, just to keep everybody safe and to, keep, to make sure that we're following those level three guidelines. Um, we will be um, getting in touch with everybody uh, who, who's on our books um, in the next week or so, so we're expecting we're expecting to have a bit more information um, from the government about what will be happening with with the lockdown. Hopefully, in the next in the next week or so, and then from there we will be contacting everybody and um, and letting everybody know what the plan is for for the resumption or or continuation of their treatment. Um, we we plan on going ahead with uh, the cycles who unfortunately had to be cancelled as we went into lockdown. Um, they will be our first priority, they were those people that were were really keen and eager to get going. Um, and then we will be moving through through the list in, in, in the same way that, that we had um, set up prior to the lockdown. So everybody will be contacted individually by the nursing team or by their doctor and um, and we'll you know make sure that everyone knows exactly where they stand and, and what the plan is going forward. Yeah. Thank you. I think Nicola we're going to we're jumping back to you now aren't, aren't we? Sure, where she is. Is Nicola gone? <laughs> we hope we haven't lost Nicola. <laughs> I think I've had a message as well to say. Um, can you hear me, Nicola? I've had a message as well to say that there's some, uh, well, someone's having problems with some the sound um, that keeps cutting out. So I don't know whether that's just one oh. person or whether it's across the well, board or whether there's anything we can do about it at this point. But okay, I haven't seen any messages. Um, if anybody is having problems, uh, people are texting in now saying that their sound is fine. If you're having problems, it does tend to work better uh, on a, a, laptop, a laptop or a PC than, um, than on a mobile, just due to bandwidth and things. Okay, thanks. So Nicola. we have already received quite a number of uh, questions in advance of tonight's session. So I think we'll start by addressing those um, those topics. So our um, our three speakers will um, will go through those those questions initially. If you have any uh, any further questions or comments, you can either type them into the box as the speaker is uh, is talking, or you can uh, wait till the end. So I think uh, Mary will. Um, kick the questions off, um, looking at uh, all the, the questions around uh, resuming full treatment under level four. And some of these questions may have already been answered in part. Yeah, so um, yeah, the only treatment we're doing under level four uh, is, is women who have cancer and are imminently starting chemotherapy. So at the moment, we're not starting any other um, treatment except for those circumstances. Um, so 
um, am I going to, um, shall I just go on and answer the questions that are going up in the little chat box? Is that what you want me to do, Nicola? Um, would fertility associates consider doing other treatment, i.e. monitored cycles during level three for patients with low AMHs or those that are getting older? Look, we've debated this long and hard. I don't, I think this is going to be difficult in terms of just the amount of monitoring that's required the extra visits and the burden on the community labs. So at the moment, our focus on level at level three is going to be around IVF, frozen embryo transfers, um, and donor insemination. However, if it looks like we have the ability to to manage, you know, the extra scans and blood tests that are involved with the other treatments like IUI and clomiphene and letrozole, we would certainly look at that. But at present, um, our plans around level three because of the, dis the, the challenges around social distancing is really going to be around IVF frozen transfers and donor insemination. Um, so then I've been asked, will IVF cycles with FA still have the usual blood monitoring? I think that it is our wish to have the minimal number of blood tests that are available, that are required. Nicola, did you want to um, address the questions under that first section anymore? Or? Well, sorry, I just don't have them in front of me. I thought they were going to be up on a screen. Okay, so that's around uh, other clinics planning on advocating or putting a case forward to the government for people to um, continue to access treatment under Level 4. Yeah, certainly that's not our plans currently. Um, and I would hope in view of the the numbers that we're seeing from the one o'clock meeting each day, which we're all addicted to, looking, you know, really cautiously optimistic, that I would hope that level four is not going to last for that much longer. But at the moment, we haven't bothered the Ministry of Health to ask that. The only question that we have asked is, are we an essential service? And, and in, under level four, we're doing what all other clinics around the world are doing, which is really just offering um, a fertility preservation treatment. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mary. Lana and Fiona, did you have anything further to add to that? Um, um, you go. <laughs> so, uh, I think um, along along with what Mary was saying in terms of the blood tests and blood monitoring, um, we will be doing things will will look a little bit different, and we will be doing um, everything that we can to to give people safe treatment, but also to try and minimise those trips to to the blood testing, you know, blood testing um, sites, and and um, yeah, we will be changing that up a little bit just to just to keep everybody safe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess, yes, just to add that, um, you know, for the clinics in Auckland anyway, um, you know, when that level alert level drops, we will be starting at the same time. But, yeah, your particular clinic will be in touch with you about the specifics of how treatments are going to, to be managed. And um, we're all working out the, the finer details of that. So as, as Mary and Lana have said, we can... You know, offer treatments as soon as possible, but making sure that you're you're safe and, and staff are safe, and that you get get the best outcome. Um, so we're making sure that we've got the resources to do that, but um, some of the details won't be able to be finalised just yet. I think we're we're all just really waiting for a date. You know, once once we once we know what day you know or when the date is for for when we're expecting to drop down to level three then we can start putting some firm plans in place and start getting people on board and and um you know going from there but until we have that date um 
we've we've definitely got plans for how it's going to work, but we can't say exactly when that will be happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need the magic day. Um, Thank you. The other questions that we had were around storage fees and and times, particularly in people nearing the the ten year mark. Look, we haven't discussed storage fees. And, you know, everyone is going to have to store things for an extra month. And I think that's about an extra $20. And I'm, I'm just not sure what's happening on, on that front. Um, with regards to if you're worried that everything's coming up to the 10-year mark, then we certainly notify you with six months to go. So I would expect that no one's going to be caught out. And if they are, just contact us because we can certainly still... Um, get an extension form out to you for to get into ECAT. So we don't, um, you know, we're still contactable, and, and that's no no sperm or embryos should be discarded just as a result of this. Yeah, yeah. And all, all the clinics have those processes in place, and ECAT are very, very very generous in terms of extensions, and I guess particularly under these circumstances. Yes, and still meeting. And still meeting, yeah. yes. And still meeting. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, um, Thank you, Mary. <laughs> as Mary said earlier, um, you know, there's there's still constant monitoring of, of any sperm, frozen sperm and embryos and, and eggs and so on. Um, so they're all being very carefully looked after. Um, obviously, the, the, the requirements for those um, are, are considered an essential service and we've still got people in there making sure that they're all okay and well looked after. So, um, yeah, there's no no concerns about, about their upkeep during this time. Yeah. Thank you. I think the next uh, lot of questions around current operations of, of clinics, I think most of those have already been covered. Uh, Lana, perhaps um, yeah, you yeah. could address we had that a few... second question around primary care packages. Yeah, 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 sure. So um, we, we had some questions, um, sort of quite specific questions around clinic operations under level four. Um, people wanting to know if they can call up for their day ones. We we can't take day ones calls um, and we, we can't have people starting their treatment or their medications until we know what day we're allowed to start again, just in case. Uh, we do you know, we may end up having that level four extended, so we don't want people to be in, in that sort of unfortunate situation. Um, uh, there's a, a question around um, pregnancy care packages and and early pregnancy monitoring. So, yes, that is still all going ahead. Um, and you just need to get in contact with your clinic um, in the best way that they've had, you know, that they've made available. Um, will all be on everybody's individual websites. Uh, at Ripamed, you can you can just get in touch with our nurses or the doctors. The doctors um, have all got their cell phone numbers on the website. Um, and you can all get in touch with the nurses to, to organise that early pregnancy monitoring. But that is still very much available. Um, and then there's another question around... Um, ovulation induction cycles and, and unmonitored letrozole or clomid cycles. Um, unmonitored cycles, if you have already been through as a patient and you um, have been to see one of the doctors beforehand, yes, you can go ahead with that. You'll just need to get in touch with um, with the with the staff. Um, there's, we've still got a full full team of nurses available to help out with these things but um, if you if you haven't done it before then you won't be able to, to just start but if you've been through and, and started those um, if you've been through before and you've, you've seen one of our doctors previously then then you can just get in touch and we can see what we can do there mm -hmm. um, and now yeah okay. Um, so we've had a few questions come through. Um, some of the questions that are quite specific, people could contact their, their clinic directly to address those. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think with um, the, the, the ones that are specific for a clinic, um, we can, everybody's contact details are all available on their individual website so if you just want to just in the interest of time I guess if you want to get hold of 
your individual clinics and um and see what that is. I just want to um, there's a question at the bottom here saying, does that mean manufactured cycle is not natural for FETs? Um, as a, as a, just a safety measure to, to keep everybody's, the number of blood tests down, um, under level three, Repromed will be doing manufactured cycles, um, for FETs. Um, we, which, which just means one blood test and, and then we can go from there, um, how will we ensure the reduced blood tests won't compromise the treatment? So the the way in which the blood tests are done and the, and the treatment's done, we can we can make sure with a few blood tests um, by things like changing to manufactured FETs rather than natural, um, we can make sure that that the treatment that is coming, you know, that is being provided is still is is still going to be the absolute best treatment for you um, with you know with with what we can offer, um, the the blood tests that we will be doing um, will be the I guess the key indicators um, that that will be required to know. So, um, and if the blood monitoring will be set to a minimum, how does it impact the different treatments? So that's something that we will we will contact each individual person and go through with them. Um, just to let everybody know it's it's different across the board and it will be different for different people um so that we will we'll get in touch with everybody individually and run through with them um how it's going to look and and what additional things we'll be putting in place to make sure that that nothing is compromised um our funded treatments available to restart it be restarted at level three so um Yes, yes. So we will be we will be resuming public funding funded cycles um, from 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 the get go, um, and we will be working through through that public list the same way that we were beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this question. Is for FA? Yeah. Um, uh, look, absolutely, but we think we've got the capacity to treat everyone. So, um, so we don't imagine we'll be saying no to anyone in terms of ringing up with the day one. We haven't let any staff go. We we are looking forward to working hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll just add um, with Fertility Plus, um, we will be um, starting up with um, well, full capacity and the people who have had to have their cycles, their treatments postponed because of the COVID crisis will be given top priority. Um, and then as Lana said as well, we recommend just working, working down the list, um, waiting list from there. Obviously, we will be looking at people who, um, in terms of their um, age, um, they have specific concerns and also looking at people who had surrogates and um, donors, for example, third parties who were ready to go um, to start at the time uh, we had to go into lockdown. Um, so, yeah. So quite a long question about someone saying they contacted the Ministry of Health and they told us that we were an essential service and, and that's indeed our understanding. But, um, but I think as an essential service, we can choose what treatments we can offer safely. And we've taken the advice of, of all the, um, the august bodies around the, around the world about what treatments we should be offering at these times. And the absolute agreement around the world is we should only be doing those that are critical to be done because of chemotherapy. So, um, so I think we are, we are an essential service, but our, the services that we offer will look different at different levels. And at level four, it's just fertility preservation. And at level three, it's IVF frozen cycles and um, and probably and and donor sperm. 
However, um, it's, um, yeah, but I don't think anyone is running an IVF clinic under level four conditions and offering a full suite of services. No, no. no. I think there's, there's, there's a general consensus from around the world, all, all, all countries that are in a similar level of lockdown are are have stopped their IVF treatment. Um, yes. Yeah. 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 Um, there's a number of reasons behind that too. Um, there's, well, you know, there's 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 things like the the PPE that is required for staff members. It's 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 the consideration of keeping everybody safe, staff safe, people coming into clinics safe. Um, we we don't want to be doing anything that potentially might increase the burden on the healthcare system. So um, we, yeah, we're just all, I guess, around the world is, is, is very united and where we stand with that. Yes, yeah. I'll just refer to that question there briefly. Um, yes, Fertility Plus would be doing FETs at level three, um, as the other clinics would be as well, yeah. Um, question about are we doing hysteroscopies? Um, I, I actually don't know the answer to that question, and that's one of the finer details that um, that um, we will um, make some plans around. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mary. Nicola, how how are we going with the um, questions that you you have in advance? I'd like to touch on the question around what happens if different areas change to different alert levels. Um, would they consider allowing clients to receive treatment outside of their area? Well, I, I doubt whether that's likely to happen with publicly funded treatments. I think that would, it's really, I believe that's really unlikely. Um, it would get pretty complicated, I think, to try and do that. But certainly in terms of um, privately funded treatments um, that would be up to to individuals and, and the clinic. I don't, know, I don't think it would be because um, in level three, there's no non-essential travel. So well, I, I think the yeah, well, I was just going to say the, yeah. the proviso is if you are permitted, depending what conditions are still in place or restrictions are still in place, you may not be able to travel to a different area or, yeah particularly if it's, you know, here or between Auckland and Wellington, for example. So, yeah, with the proviso of restrictions that may still be in place like travel. But otherwise, if there are no restrictions, that you know, prohibiting that, then yes, that for privately funded treatment. Mm. Okay. Um. I think, um, Nicola, there are a couple of questions here around um, where IVF medicines are, are coming mm. from and, and where, um, whether we are seeing these being affected by the pandemic at all. Um, so we get uh, medicines and, and media and from it's, it's, it's produced all around the world um, at RIPPROMED, our... our um, the media that we use in the embryology lab comes in from Sweden. Um, so we've been, right from the very start of this this pandemic, we've been in contact with all of our suppliers to ensure that we can make sure that we've got a constant supply of, of everything that is, is needed. And um, we, you know, it's, we've had, um, we just want to be sure that we're ready to hit the ground running as soon as we can. Um, we're not expecting any delays and we've been assured by the drug companies that they're doing their absolute best to make sure that, that we'll still have our supply. Um, we've got lots of different options that we can use, so um, we're, we're not expecting any issues with the, um, with the supply of our, our medicines and our uh, embryology lab medias. Um, um, I also had another question here around testing, um, like additional testing. Um, so this is, I mean, these questions are, are, are sort of, I guess, what's being um, made available through lab tests and and what we can do through them if the lockdown continues and, and whether tests are going to stay on hold or not. 
Um, so we've we've also been in constant contact with lab tests, um, and there there have been some restrictions just due to the the huge volume of, of COVID nineteen tests that they've had coming through. Um, and they're, they're doing the best with with their large workload at the moment. Um, they've said that that most testing outside of the the um, the usual IVF blood monitoring that we're doing. Um, is available, but we're we're going to see some delays on those. So there's a, a, a specific question here about the carrier type. That one specifically, I'm not too sure about. Um, I know with with things like AMH testing, they are going to be batching these now, and they will run those that that batch of tests, um, you know, when they can. But there we we are expecting some delays on on those. But there are there are certain tests that are still going ahead. Um, uh if I could also speak to the carrier types, I think I signed off about mm -hmm. 10 normal carrier types today. So clearly they're still okay. they're still um, running them, which was yeah. kind of heartening because I'd, I had yeah. heard that most of the genetics lab had gone to virology. So I was quite pleased to see those come through. Oh, nice. Oh, that's great to know. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's take a look at those. Um, radiology providers are open and they're doing, they're actually actually functioning at the moment and they're yeah. functioning at only about 30% workload. So they might well do HSGs at the moment, to be perfectly frank. They are really wanting some work. Um, I think that at level three, our transfers will be manufactured. Um, um, and we think we see the same rate between a manufactured and a natural cycle. The disadvantage of a course of the manufactured cycle is the necessity to take medication. And if you conceive, you need to then continue on that medication until you're around 10 weeks pregnant. And, and everyone knows about the the um, the unpleasantness of the eutrogestin pessaries. So, yeah, sorry in advance. Mm -hmm. um, and PGS testing, absolutely. Um, is PGS testing will be available under level three. Um, we've got a question here for do natural and managed cycles at level three. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming this is referring to, to frozen embryo transfer cycles um so Repromed will will also be doing um will also be doing manufactured so the managed cycles under under level three um we natural cycles uh, just just through the, the the necessity to have daily blood tests um are, are are just a little bit risky under that level three so we'll be looking at doing manufactured for um for frozen embryo transfers. Um, I, I think that's what you meant by the Yeah, I think question. that's what they mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we're really confident about our supplies. We we yeah. checked that out really well before we went into lockdown and, um, and we are very confident of what we have. Hmm. That's part, yeah. all part it's of all looking the good. Seen some planning. Planning after business, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, at um, question about at FA at level three, will we be doing monitored cycles with electrozole? We think we actually probably won't be. Um, and that's just around um, minimizing the number of people we have in the clinic, minimizing the number of scans. And it's just around what's logistically required at level three. So at level three, everyone needs to be in PPE. That's um, and that you know when you have a scan, then all the linen needs to be changed. There needs to be a wipe down of everything. It's just logistically too difficult to to cope with any um, with big numbers of people. So I think that. Um, so for those reasons, I think at level three we won't be offering monitored cycles with electrozole, and I'm and I'm sorry. And roll on level two. Yeah, business as usual sounds great. Doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Thank you, Nicola. Do you um, do you have more questions that you'd like addressed from the the ones that came in earlier?
the uh, public funding and uh, wait times? And do we think there's going to be any pressure on um, the fertility uh, government um, funding for fertility? I'm happy to speak to that unless one of you would like to. Yeah, well, there absolutely won't be because we've got contracts. And so so we anticipate yeah. that the fertility fund is, that funding is going to be sacrosanct. Yeah. which is great to hear. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few more questions, but they're all really quite specific to, uh, to people's situation and treatment. So mm -hmm. again, uh, I'm sure your clinic would be very happy to hear from you with, with your questions with regards to your particular um, treatment situation. Yeah. So unless anybody has any other uh, general questions, I'd just like to hand over to Fiona to give a few um, insights and, and tips, which um, would be helpful to all of us during this uh, during this difficult time. Terrific. Thanks, Nicola. Thanks. Um, and look, I guess just to to recap, first of all, and and I hope I hope that it has been helpful hearing. Um, having this conversation tonight and, and hopefully reassuring to know that the clinics are all working hard behind the scenes and very keen to, to get up and running again as soon as possible. Um, so again, please just, as Nicola said, if you have specific questions, please get in touch with the staff at, at your clinics. The staff are available um, during this time um, and just keep checking checking your emails for correspondence from, from the clinic and updates from the clinic um, and keep checking um, websites, etc. as well for updated information and hope, hopefully again, um, you know, by end of next week we'll, we'll have um, be able to answer more, more of your questions. But there are certainly very um, good plans um, being worked out at the moment to get things up and running quickly and safely for everybody. Um, so look, I won't talk for long um, in terms of some coping strategies and things, but um, there have been quite a quite an impressive lot of resources actually I've seen, um, and hopefully you've all seen some as well in the newspapers and um, in the media, lots of good coping tips um, that have been um, provided. And certainly some of the best um, ones I have forwarded on to Nicola um, as well to share through Fertility New Zealand and certainly on the uh, Fertility Plus, and I know the other clinics also have some good tips on, on uh, the websites and things as well. So I think some of the key things though, um, and as many of you will already have experienced with dealing with fertility uncertainty, I think when you're dealing with really uncertain times, it's helpful to focus down on the things that are most important to you and within those things that are most important to you, focus on the things that you, you can control. Um, so with your fertility situation, for example, focusing on at the moment, um, getting good accurate information. So joining the webinar is an example of that and keeping up to date with your uh, clinic's information on, on the website or asking specific questions to your clinic might be all part of that. Um, keeping going and focusing on your healthy lifestyle choices um, um, during the time you know you you can't can't be moving forward with treatments. Um, so focusing, as I say, on the things that you you can control and that are most um, important to you. Um, I think I think that's probably the core the core message really. Um, but also. Um, you know, please do, um, I think one of the most helpful tips that, um, you know, has been shared a lot lately is just to sort of watch your your media diet and your social media diet and mm -hmm. um, perhaps, you know, turn off some of the notifications on your phone, um, perhaps, you know, just limit the number of times a day that you're looking at the news and that kind of thing, because that can really, I think, add to that sense of, 
the situation feeling quite quite um, overwhelming. So that's okay just to, to dial that, that back a bit. Um, you can still keep on top of what's happening, but without perhaps adding to anxiety or um, that sense of um, uh, overload, really. Um, I think um, it's also really important um, in social media, and I know some of the feedback I've had from people who are looking to forum, the usual forums and fertility forums and things at the moment for support. Some of the feedback I've had is that um, that there is a lot of um, there's a lot of good support still happening, and it's still a good place to be able to share your your fears and your your feelings. But um, please do be mindful of um, you know, sharing, just share information that you know is is accurate um, and factual information because otherwise it, it can um, not only, you know, uh, lead to perhaps increasing your own anxiety levels but increase the anxiety levels of, of others. And I know some people are certainly finding that at the moment. Um, if some of your usual support people um, perhaps are... Uh, um, not as able to emotionally be available to you at the moment. Maybe they've got lots of other things going on as well during this this uh, challenging time. Um, as we've mentioned earlier, please do remember that the uh, clinic counsellors are available at the moment um, by phone or by Zoom and Skype. So we're really happy to talk with you about um, your specific um, a specific self care plan um, and specific strategies that um, might be helpful for you um, um, at the moment to get get through this uncertainty, um, and just um, yeah, basically sticking to sticking to routines as much as as possible. Um, of course, with the limitations of physical distancing and all of that, um, some of those tips again that have you know been fairly widely. Um, circulated at the moment I think are, are really uh, really useful um, and just generally being really kind to yourselves um, you know you uh, this you know situation was not something you you could have predicted or anticipated um, and just yeah just being really really kind to yourselves um, at the moment and focusing on the things that make you feel good make you feel supported um, and that will all help to to um, keep you nurtured and keep you well, um, ready for the next steps in your fertility journey um, soon. Um, so just yeah, just take take good care of yourselves and please do reach out to us in the clinics with any questions and just for that extra layer of support at the moment. That's our that's our key message tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. I just see there's one more question that's popped up around um, letters for travelling to clinics at level three. Mm. Um, I don't know if either of you, have, Mary or Fiona, have got more information on that one. Yeah, um, we've, we've been providing them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so there's just a standard letter that you just yeah contact your your clinic and there'll yeah. be yeah. a yeah. letter that they can give you. Yeah. In fact, I had one woman who was very late for an appointment during the lockdown and, and, and you know, normally everyone says, oh, it's the traffic. And I was thinking, it can't be the traffic, it's the lockdown. And she'd been stopped by the police twice on, on oh, wow. one trip. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even an appointment reminder on a phone, I know someone has used to, um, you know, be able yeah. to, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and if I mean you just have the letter on your phone if you if you don't have access yeah. to a printer or anything like that. It's, yeah, yeah, terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Nicola. All right. Yeah, I think we'll we'll wrap up there. So I just wanted to say a, a enormous thank you to uh, we're lucky to have such wonderful clinics in New Zealand uh, who are working together and just so dedicated to providing quality care uh, so we're really thankful for that and thank you all for lending your time and your expertise uh, tonight to um, to provide support and information to to so many Kiwis during this this difficult time so thank you all so much uh, next week we will have another webinar on timing of sex if anybody's interested uh, in joining us this time next week so uh, thank you very much. Um,
to everybody for for taking uh, time during your evening to to join us tonight um, and to our wonderful presenters. So thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Take thank care, you, Nicola. Everybody. Yeah, everyone look after yourselves and we hope yeah. to see everyone soon. Thank you. Good night. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.